Good morning, Harold. Uh, yes, good morning, Damo. Yeah, there's some really interesting stories from around the Darling Dam always, but especially this morning. Yeah, there certainly is. We're going to take you to have a little look at the flying tailor of uh, Dolby. Yeah, that's right. Look, the most famous tailor of all was Peter Garrow in the early 20th century, and he was one of the most prominent public figures in Dolby history. Garrow was born in Scotland in 1879, he was apprenticed as a tailor from just 12 years of age. In England, he entered the service of Hill Brothers, which is the famous Bond Street tailors. And among his personal clients were Prince Arthur, who was the third son of Queen Victoria, and her oldest son, King George V himself. Now, Garrow settled in Dolby in 1908 and established his tailoring business there. In the 1920s, he was mayor of Dolby for five years and took an active part in almost every public body going there. He passed away in 1933, the following year a memorial window in his honour at Dolby's new St Thomas's Presbyterian Church was unveiled by none other than the Queensland Premier. Mm. But it's not Peter Garrett that I want to tell you about, but rather his oldest son, Alexander Herbert Garrow. Now, Garrow Jr., he was educated at the Dolby State School and then at Scots College Warwick. He was a scoutmaster and was keenly interested in aviation, and so he was a founding member of the Dolby Aero Club and got his pilot's licence. On the death of his father in 1933, Garrow took over the tailoring business and added a dry cleaning to the services. Hmm. He purchased a Gypsy Moth aeroplane and piloted himself across the state to places like Taroom and other country places on business trips, building his tailor empire. That's how he became known as the Flying Tailor. Right. Now, Garrow drew, uh, grew the lucrative dry cleaning businesses from Dolby to Toowoomba, Brisbane, Ipswich, Rockhampton, Tansville, Cairns, and more. Its name is still known in the dry cleaning business today. You might have even used Garrow's at some stage yourself. You never know. Yeah, but in 1935, something happened to the flying tailor that changed everything. Oh. It was on the morning of Friday, the 24th of May, 1935, when Garrow landed at Dolby in his gypsy moth. He went to have breakfast and left the plane with a Dolby motor mechanic, Martin Cosgrove. Now, he was going to overhaul the engine. Now, when Garrow got back and returned, Cosgrove actually wanted to join Garrow and his passenger, Lionel Ward, on his next flight to Toowoomba. Now, Ward was a grazier from Rome, and he and Garrow were good friends because they were both scoutmasters, although nothing could prepare them for what happened next. You see, after the takeoff, the aeroplane rose at 250 feet when the engine suddenly failed. Garrow could do nothing other than look for a place to land. Now, avoiding hitting a house, he saw Mile Creek. Now, when 10 feet above the water, he cut out all his switches and the plane smashed into the creek bank and burst into flames. Garrow remembered being freed after the crash, but nothing after that. However, his passenger, the original passenger, the Grazier Ward, he was thrown clear of the wreckage and was uninjured when the plane burst into flames. Now, despite the obvious danger, he rushed back to the burning wreck and dragged Garrow from the cockpit. But the mechanic, Cosgrove, was trapped. Now, Ward struggled and eventually pulled him clear, but his efforts were in vain because Cosgrove, well, he was badly burned and injured and he only lived for a few hours more. And Ward himself, well, he suffered horrendous burns as a result of the rescue attempts, and he himself died in hospital just days later. At his funeral in Roma, the coffin was carried by the Roma Boy Scouts. From the door of the church to the hearse, Boy Scouts, Cubs and Girl Guides formed the Guard of Honour. Now, more aeroplane tragedy followed our unfortunate flying tailor. In 1942, during the Second World War, his brother, Jim Garrow, was killed in a flying accident with Bomber Command in the UK. Alexander was informed of his brother's death as an ex-kin. Back here in Queensland, Jim had been a boarder at Toowoomba Grammar School. Now, the following year, in 1943, 
Alexander Garrow himself died, aged just nine, just 36. Wow. So he was he's still a young man. Mm-hmm. He had lived only another eight years after his gypsy moth crash. Now, in his many obituaries, no mention was made of his halcyon days as the flying tailor, nor of the Dolby double fatality plane crash that happened at Mile Creek, just 200 yards from town. Now, Damo, there's no memorial there to this, this tragic accident in the, well, the halcyon days of, of, of pioneering flight, but uh, it's, it's worth remembering the flying tailor and their, and their heroes of that crash. Well, it certainly is, mate, and I think it's high time we've got a little plaque put there somewhere uh, to acknowledge uh, this uh, very historical moment in early flight in Queensland. Totally agree. Look, I mean, he's the flying tailor. He was famous and dry cleaning. Who hasn't heard of Garrows? I'm sure you've had uh, at, your, uh, at least your... Um, High school formal suit uh, at Garrow. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, yeah. I don't do my own washing and uh, tailoring. So, yeah, I've got to uh, outsource it. So. <laughs> hey, listen, that is a great story. And, of course, uh, we can read about that one and many other stories as well. We can jump onto your website, historyoutthere.com, and get that story. And uh, you'll put that up in the, in the next day or so, won't you? Yep, it'll be online tomorrow morning, historyoutthere.com. And the other thing I like too is all of the wonderful pictures you find uh, to put with the story so we can actually feel as though we can uh, sort of see what you're talking about as well. Yeah, I want to relive that. You can not You can only describe the pictures so much on radio, so that's why I like to post what photos I can find here. Tomorrow I'll be, I'll be showing some of the, those characters from involved from these tragic events in Dolby all those years ago, but also actually the uh, charred remains of the gypsy moth. Yeah, and uh, the photo that uh, we've got up on our Facebook, which uh, you sent me, uh, uh, did, did I get that right? That looked like you in the photo. That was, yes, me about to go up in a tiger moth. So a related plane to the one that crashed in 1935. But uh, actually, that was me. I love flying a tiger moth whenever I can. Oh, there you go. See, now there's something I didn't know about you, Harold. <laughs> it doesn't happen often enough, though. But, yeah, look, it's a 360-degree freedom up there. It's beautiful. Oh, I could imagine, mate. Yeah, it'd be uh, up in the, in the clouds and uh, not a care in the world, I would imagine. That's that's right. Although I feel that way when listening to your dulcet tones on four WK Day, oh. I was very much the same. Geez, I'm going to have to pay you more now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harold, uh, thank you so much for that, mate. I appreciate the story and look forward to catching up again next week. I'd love to. There we go, Harold Peacock. And you can check that story out, as we said, by jumping onto the website, historyoutthere.com. And, of course, if you've got any interesting stories. Now, uh, Harold uh, is looking for stories like that one, which has a community-wide uh, benefit uh, that you can let people know about some of the history in your community. And if you've got a lead that you'd like to pass on to Harold, all you have to do is email me at 4wkstudio at gmail.com. That's 4wkstudio studio at gmail.com send us the information we'll pass it on to harold for you uh, because uh, you know we need to have that in in written form so that uh, harold can uh, have a little look at it and see if he can track down any of the history associated with the story that you're telling but that's how it's all about is uh, finding out these wonderful rich local history stories that we have all right it is nearly time for us to take you back uh, to our national newsroom and uh, when we come back after that we'll be catching up with the leader of the nationals a member for maranoa david little proud